Hello, welcome to the series of video lectures on object-oriented programming with C++. In last class, we have discussed the basics of object-oriented programming such as class and object. In today's class, we are going to discuss the language C++. So C++ is an object-oriented programming language. First of all, we should discuss what is language. If we want to establish a communication between two sites, we require a common language between two sites. For example, if we talk about the conversation or communication between the human beings, we require at least a common language, either that will be Hindi or English. Then only the communication will be possible. But if a common language is not there in between two sites, then the communication will not be possible. In that case, no communication will be established between two sides. Now, if we talk about today's scenario, we normally communicate with the computers or machines. Again, we require some common languages which could be understood by both the sides. For example, C, C++, Java and all are the programming languages which are used to establish a communication between the human beings and the computers. So what is the language? If we want to establish a communication between two sites, we require a common language, at least a single common language between both the sites. Now, what is object oriented? We have already discussed the object oriented concepts in previous lectures. All those concepts which deals with the object, its data security and its behavior, all those concepts are known as the object oriented concepts. The key terms of object oriented concepts are classes, objects, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism and all. These are the concepts, con conceptual terms. But if we want to implement these conceptual terms in reality with the help of the computer, then we require a language which supports these concepts to convert it into reality. And that language is known as or that language is C++, we will use that. So, the C++ is an object oriented language. Now, initially, it was named as C with classes. There is a powerful language that is C. Some features are added to C language to make it object oriented language. These features are classes, inheritance, overloading and all. So, we can say that C++ is a superset of C. Means, everything which is valid in C will be valid in C++. And additionally, the add-on is classes, inheritance, overloading. C++ language was developed by Strustrup in at and lab. This is all about the basics of C++. Now, let us discuss some common terms related to programming. The first term we should discuss or know that is algorithm. An algorithm is a sequential set of instructions to accomplish any given task. In real life, if you want to perform any task, we have to go through some steps and these steps must be followed in a specific sequence, then only our task will be completed. Now, what is a program? Once an algorithm is defined, algorithm cannot be run on computer. Why? Because it is not written in any programming language. So, first of all, we will have to convert the algorithm into a program. If we translate this algorithm using any programming language, it will become a program. And now this program can be run on any computer. Why? Because it is written in any programming language. The third important term that is character set. Now, for this we will be having an analogy. As we have term C++ as a language, any language there will be two things. One is the character set of that specific language and another is grammar. Now, if we talk about the languages like Hindi, we are having the character set and the name of that character set is Varnamala, consisting of 52 characters containing A, A, E, E, K, Kh, G, G and so on and the remaining part will be grammar. Now, if we talk about English, the English language has its own predefined character set consisting of 26 characters and it is known as alphabet set and the remaining part will be the grammar. Here in Hindi, the grammar is termed as Vyakaran. So, to learn any language, we require the fixed character set of that language along with its grammar. Now, we have termed C++ as a language and hence the C++ will be having the same scenario. The character set of C++ language is ASCII and it consists of 256 characters in it. This stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange consisting of 256 characters in it. They are 
फर्स्ट इज अल्फाबेट सेट्स कैपिटल ए टू कैपिटल जेड स्मॉल ए टू स्मॉल जेड देन डिजिट जीरो टू नाइन एंड देन रिमेनिंग आर द स्पेशल सिम्बॉल्स प्लस माइनस मल्टीप्लीकेशन डिविजन मॉड हैश लेस देन ग्रेटर देन एंड सो ऑन इन सभी को मिलाकर C++ प्लस प्लस लैंग्वेज का कैरेक्टर सेट बनता है जिसे कि हम आज की कैरेक्टर सेट कहते हैं एंड द रिमेनिंग पार्ट इज द ग्रामर ऑफ C++ प्लस प्लस लैंग्वेज वी विल डिस्कस इट इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर नाउ लेट अस मूव फर्दर द अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म रिलेटेड टू प्रोग्रामिंग इज द वेरिएबल वेरिएबल इज एक्चुअली अ नेम्ड मेमोरी लोकेशन व्हिच इज यूज्ड to store or hold some data but as the data which is stored in that memory location may vary and hence it is known as the variable so this is just a memory location which will hold the data for example if we take a variable with name as num this may contain 5 or it may contain 50 or it may contain 150 and so on so the data which is stored in this memory location may vary and hence it is termed as the variable now there are some naming conventions for the variable naming conventions of the variable says that length of variable name should be minimal now second is it should be meaningful alpha numeric characters we can use but in that case it must not start with the digit in sare rule se related justification hum c language ki playlist mein dekh chuke hain next rule is while naming the variable keywords are not allowed means the keywords cannot be used as the variable names the next is special symbols are not allowed and the last rule is it is case sensitive case sensitivity means we can have a variable with name as capital a so we can have another variable with name as small a now next term which is important and must be discussed is data type it mainly specifies the size or the memory requirement for the variable and it also decides the type of data which can be stored in a variable for a detailed discussion of the data type just refer to the playlist of c language the data types are same with c and c++ some important data types are int float and char these are the primitive data types this will consume 2 bytes of memory this requires 4 bytes of memory and character variable require 1 byte of memory except these primitive type of data types c++ supports user defined data types and if we want to define the user defined data type in c++ we use classes once the user defined data type is created we can create the variables of that type and those variables of the type class are known as the objects this is all about the basic terms of c++ programming language in next video lecture we will discuss the grammar of c++ language please do like share and comment subscribe my video channel don't forget to press the bell icon thank you